We're going to head down to Dollar Tree and grab some wreath frames. We're going to need six of them. First thing you're going to do is put two sides together. And the secret is we're going to use zip ties. We've got to get these corners put together. Put them up on the sides right there and on the bottom. You're going to pull that tight. We want to make sure it fits really nice. Cut that excess off. It's going to be much easier now because you're starting to form your box. Once you get the box done, we got to put the top on and the bottom. The way this is done, just put it on, but the zip tie goes a little bit different. You can just wrap it up and around and form it together just like that. Make sure again, you pull it tight and cut the excess off. Now let's grab some easy liner. The big key to this, it's, it's gotta be transparent. You gotta be able to see through it. Once you lay it out, just wrap it around the box and this is gonna take care of the four sides. Once you put it all the way over the top and down the side, that is gonna allow us to know where we need to put that first cut. And you're gonna cut right between the dots that are on the easy liner. Once you get that done, we're gonna use hot glue. Now, don't worry that it's hot glue. It forms and holds that together really nice. It actually kind of melts the plastic a little bit like you're welding it. Go ahead and go the rest of the way down. That way we're gonna form all four of these sides. Now it's time to do the top. We wanna use one of our frames to go ahead and size it and cut it out. And we're gonna use those flaps to lay over. Again, grab the hot glue, put it down, and lay it down. Once you get it all put together, grab some ribbon and we're gonna tie a knot in it. You can use any color you want. I used red on this one, and it's time for the lights. Yep, we're gonna make this thing glow. That's why I was talking about using it transparent. But we just don't wanna throw those lights in there. We wanna zip time around the side. Once we get it, let's take it outside, stack them together, and we're gonna plug it in. Watch this, there's that glow, and look at this. I absolutely love it. It is waterproof because of the liner, and it glows right there in the front door. It's an amazing decor just to have at your front door and leave it out and as it glows, you can see it from the street and it also is there to greet anybody that comes up, knocks on your door. I hope you enjoyed that last project, but don't forget to hit subscribe. That way you won't miss any future Home Talk episodes. Now stay tuned, we got another one coming up right now. The next time you're at the home improvement store, be sure to grab a can of spray foam. You're not gonna believe what you can make with it. To start this project, you have to remove the cap and you have to securely attach the little spout to your um, spray can. And you wanna make sure for this project that you are wearing gloves. This stuff is very hard to get off your hands, so you definitely wanna make sure you've got some gloves on. So you wanna start off fairly small and just press down the nozzle and it's gonna start filling. And you just kinda wanna make make these however you'd like and you want to keep spraying some foam again don't forget that they're going to keep expanding and you can work this around if you need to um, however you'd like and we want to make a bunch of these kind of blobs and you can add some onto it and we're going to leave this. So we want to make a bunch of these. And again, you want to make sure that you're doing this on your parchment paper because it'll make it much easier to pull off later. And I'm going to keep making some. And then we're just going to let these dry overnight. As these are starting to dry, you can start adding on more layers and bumps to your um, piles. The reason we don't do this all at once is because it'll just kind of all meld into each other. But as they're starting to dry and get a little hard, you can start adding little um, additions onto them. Once your pieces are about halfway dry, I like to peel them up at that point. So it may not be completely dry and that's okay. And what I wanna do is add some texture to the back side because I don't wanna have these flat necessarily on one side. So I'm just gonna do the same thing and add some texture to the back. Once your foam popcorn pieces are all ready and dry, it's time to get ready to start stringing these into the garland. So to make a hole to go through these, I'm gonna use one of these large skewers and you just wanna make sure it's got a point on the end. You can decide how you want your popcorn piece to be on your garland and then you're just going to poke the skewer right through the foam. Super, super easy. So you can go in one side, out the other, and I wiggle it around a little just to make sure I have some nice space in there. 
The other thing we're gonna need to make our garland are some Christmas balls. So I've picked out some really pretty red ones here and I'm gonna use the top of these to actually string them. So I'm gonna just snip off these cords that they came with. And you could, if you wanted to, take these balls and um, drill a hole through one side and out the other to actually string these through your garland. But I want to show you how to do this without any tools. Now it's time to start stringing our garland. So I'm going to take one of these small skewers that I picked up at the dollar store and just some hemp twine. And I'm going to twist that hemp twine right around the end of this. And I'm going to use some clear tape to just hold that in place and you want to twist it as tight as possible because you might have a hard time getting it through the little um, loops on the end of the Christmas balls but if you do you can just take the take the twine right off the skewer and then just add it back on to go through the next popcorn ball okay so I've got this on my skewer and I'm gonna start stringing my popcorn balls or my popcorn pieces here so I'm just gonna pop that right through the hole I already made with the larger skewer and it'll just come right out the other side and I can just pull my twine right out the other side. If you have trouble getting the twine through your little hole like this, like I said, you can always pop your twine back off of your skewer and just string it right through your um, baubles here, your little ornaments and then you can attach it back to the skewer for the next one. And then it'll just come right out the other side and you can pull it straight through. So as you're doing this, you can kind of get a feel for how you want these spaced out and you can keep going until you have all your popcorn and your um, little ornaments all attached. So I'm gonna keep stringing this garland and I'll be back to show you what it looks like. This giant popcorn garland was so fun to make and there are so many ways you can use it around the holidays. It is perfect for adding a pop of color and whimsy. Let me know if you give it a try. Grab some tinsel garland and some square wire wreath forms from your favorite dollar store or craft store for this easy and festive Christmas project. Place two of the square wreath forms on their side to create an upright L shape. Then, using small zip ties, connect one side of each frame to the other. Use two zip ties to create a solid connection for stability. Add that fourth wreath form with the zip ties so all four wire frames are connected to form a 3D square. Now that you've got one wreath form left, lay it on top to create a box. Cut off the ends of all the zip ties with some sharp scissors. And it's tinsel time. Take a tinsel garland and hot glue one end of the garland to a corner at the bottom of the wreath frame box. Carefully wind the garland around the bottom of the frame box and continue to wrap, working your way upwards. Periodically, use a little hot glue to anchor the garland to the box. A little goes a long way. You don't need to go crazy with the hot glue. When you come to the end of one garland, just start with another garland and continue the wrapping. Hot glue at the beginning of each garland to attach it to the frame. Next, take another garland and start to cover the top. Again, use hot glue to initially anchor the end of the garland to the edge of the top. Because you're covering the top of the box frame, you can just weave the garland in and out through the sides of the box frame. I ended up using just two garlands to cover the top of my box. Every wrapped present needs some ribbon and a bow, and this present needs a big bow. I broke it down into three steps. First, the side ribbon. Wrap a long length of wired ribbon around the box and twist underneath before bringing the tails up and over the sides of the box and knotting on top. Second, take another length of wired ribbon and slide through the previously knotted ribbon at the top of the present. Tie in a knot on top and curl the ribbon ends with your hand into a gentle wave for the tails of the bow. Last, make the actual big bow. Then attach the bow to the top of the box by connecting with the florist wire. 
And there you have it. This project looks great displayed under a Christmas tree or even on a dining table or kitchen island as a spectacular centerpiece. I hope this inspired you to make your own square wreath decorative Christmas present. Thanks for watching Home Talk and see you next time. <music>